love the ZX Spectrum. I first saw one at school back in 1984. I think of Sir Clive Sinclair in the same light as Arthur C. Clarke, both genius. And I think I like retro gaming almost as much as I like sci-fi. Both are a way, a form of letting your imagination go. And I remember the first time I saw Manic Miner running on a ZX Spectrum and I absolutely loved it. In fact, the first three that I played was Death Chase, Manic Miner, and Night Law. So then, 10 games that defined the ZX Spectrum. Number 10, Horace Go Skiing. Now this is a strange one. A Frogger-like game developed by Sydney Development Corporation. Horace Go Skiing was released in 1982. Horace is also recognized as a legendary 8-bit figure. The game features the character Horace, who is controlled by the player as he skis down a mountain. The player must navigate through various obstacles such as trees and rocks while also trying to reach the bottom of the mountain as quickly as possible. The game was well received upon its release and was considered one of the better skiing video games of its time. Number 9. School Days. The game is set in a fictional school where the player takes on the role of a student named Eric. The player must navigate through the school and complete tasks such as collecting confiscated items, avoiding the school's headmaster and releasing classmates from detention. The game allows the player to explore the school and interact with other characters in various ways. School Days was well received upon its release and it's not just considered a classic, it's also regarded as one of the pioneers of the sandbox game genre. Number 8. The Hobbit in a hole in the ground lived a hobbit. <laughs> the Hobbit is an action adventure video game developed by Beam Software and published by Melbourne House for the ZX Spectrum home computer. If you don't already know, the game is based on J.R.R. Tolkien's 1937 fantasy novel, The Hobbit, and features the protagonist, Bilbo Baggins, as he goes on a journey to reclaim the lonely mountain from the dragon Smaug. Players must solve puzzles and complete various tasks to progress through the story. A very faithful adaptation. Number 7. Dizzy, the ultimate cartoon adventure. Developed by British software company Codemasters, the series follows the adventure of an anthropomorphic egg named Dizzy, as he travels through the various worlds and overcomes obstacles in order to rescue his girlfriend, Daisy. The series was known for its colourful and whimsical graphics and its puzzle solving gameplay. The series received positive reviews for its charming and inventive gameplay. It was a game for a laugh. Number 6. Head Over Heels Developed by John Rittman and Bernie Drummond and published by Ocean Software for the ZX Spectrum home computers, the game is a platformer where the player controls two characters, Head and Heels who have to work together to explore a series of interconnected rooms and solve puzzles in order to progress. It was considered a classic of its time and it was praised for its challenging puzzles and inventive use of the two-player mechanic. Number 5. Night Law You play a knight called Saberman. The game takes place in a haunted castle where the player must explore, solve puzzles while avoiding various monsters and traps. British magazine Edge described the game's graphics engine as the single greatest advance in the history of video games. It's also one of the first games to put one sprite on top of another sprite without corruption. Crash magazine called it sheer perfection. Number 4. Saber Wolf In this one, the player takes on the role of Saberman, who is once again trying to find a cure. The game takes place in a jungle where the player must explore and collect treasures while avoiding various monsters, including the titular Saber Wolf. Our protagonist must also collect pieces of an amulet that will help him break the curse. The ZX Spectrum version alone sold over 350,000 copies, making this one of the most successful 8-bit games of all time. Number 3. Jet Set Willy you can't beat a bit of Willy. One reason is that it was one of the first platform games to feature a large and complex game world, with multiple rooms to explore and many items to collect. Another reason is the level of difficulty. It was challenging but not impossible to complete. 
which made it popular among players who enjoyed a good challenge. Matthew Smith not only built on the success of Manic Miner, he created a game that was even more challenging and complex than the original. A larger, more detailed game. Number 2. Manic Miner The original and the best. It was one of the first platform games to be released for home computers in the early 80s. It was one of the first of its genre and it set the standard for future platform games. It was a trailblazer of its time, introducing new concepts and gameplay mechanics that had never been seen before, especially from a computer game. The difficulty was pitched just right. It was challenging, but not impossible to complete. I think it's safe to admit now, my cousin and I bought a pirated copy of this from the Birmingham rag market. We didn't have a clue what we were doing. We sat up until the early hours taking turns to steer the ship and dock with the mothership. It felt then like it was stretching the hardware of the ZX Spectrum. And it not only inspired me, but it inspired a generation. We didn't realise at the time, we thought this was a ZX Spectrum exclusive. Yes, the BBC micro version is the best, but the ZX Spectrum is no slouch either. <laughs> 